time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope. Mr. William Bradford Huey, editor of the American Mercury, and Mr. Donald I. Rogers, an editor of the New York Herald Tribune. Our distinguished guest for this evening is Mr. Louis V. Sutton, president of the Carolina Power and Light Company. The opinions expressed are necessarily those of the speakers. Mr. Sutton, a few weeks ago, we had Mr. Oscar Chapman, the interior secretary, on our panel. And he presented for us the government's role in the production of electric power. Now, I know you, as a representative of private industry, have a very strong position on that. Could you tell us what it is, sir? We are opposed to further encroachment of the private power business by the government. Do you feel that there's a sinister influence when you say you have such opposition? I do. What is that? The private electric companies have built up a great industry. We are serving the people efficient, well, one of the few industries where the product has not cr increased over the years. We are big taxpayers. You and mean where the price has not increased? The price has not increased. And we resent the government uh, coming in and taking over the business and endeavoring to socialize the power business. Well, according to Mr. Chapman, when he was on this show, uh, he made a case for a need for the government to step in and produce electric power. There's absolutely no need for the government to come in and furnish power. The private power companies have taken care of the situation in the past. There has not been a shortage of electric power. There's no shortage today in the territory served by the private companies, and we can take care of the situation. Now, he tied his case <coughs> primarily to the need for flood control irrigation control, soil erosion, said that in building dams to take care of these things, they could also build hydroelectric facilities and thus produce electric power. Produce it, he said, cheaper than you of the private industries could produce it. Is this true? I do not think so. Well, now, Mr. Sutton, our audience, of course, is familiar with this long battle that's going on now between the private industry and government on the public power issue. Now, sir, first, what percentage of power that's being generated is now supplied to the American public by the government, the federal government? About 10 percent. And how much are you uh, private people supplying? About 80 percent. And, 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 and do you believe that it's in the public interest for you to continue to supply at least 80 percent? Very definitely, I do. And you are fighting now to, to maintain that ratio, to see that the government doesn't encroach further on your 80 percent of the business. We are endeavoring to do that. Now, sir, uh, it's been stated many times in the past that the private utility companies maintain vast slush funds that you spend a lot of money on propaganda. Uh, are you spending, a, is there a vast propaganda effort now uh, on your part? There is not. The utility companies have been pitifully poor advertisers. I think one of the mistakes the industry has made has not been in going out and telling their story to the public. We think we've done a great job in developing the power industry and in giving the wonderful service we have at the low cost. But we have not told the people the story of what we are doing. Well, just for the sake of argument, sir, how much are you spending for promotion of your facilities? Well, let me answer you this way. The industries in America as a whole, according to uh, the recent issue of advertising age, are, spend, are spending about 1% of their gross sales in advertising of all kinds, radio, television, newspaper, and magazine. The utility industry is spending less than one-fourth of 1% 1 of its gross sales. Further, the three large soap companies in this country are spending in their total advertising, all of their costs, from three to four times as much each year as the total utility industry is spending. Now, as against that pitifully small amount that we're doing, here's the federal government, and I have 
There are many statements as to how much they are spending in propaganda. But the current issues of Reader's Digest has an article by Mr. Stanley High in which he speaks of the approximately 45,000 persons in the federal government who are putting out propaganda, and he estimates a cost of approximately $200 million a year. You, th you think the federal government is spending far more on propaganda and has far more propagandists than you have? Many, many times. Ours is just almost insignificant compared with that. Do you Let's feel that this is one of the major mistakes of the utilities down through the years? You've not done this? I do. We haven't told our story to the people. Are you taking steps now to correct this? We are doing more of it now. We feel that the most powerful weapon we can use to protect ourselves is to give the public the truth and the facts concerning our industry. Mr. And Sutton, uh, I, of course, am a southerner like yourself, and I come from the TVA area. Now, let's get just this thing clear. Are the private utility companies opposed to the government's building a dam? No, not if it's justified. Well, now, what do you mean, sound. justified? You, you, you believe that they ought to build dams for flood control, but not for, for the generation of power. Is that correct? Well, first of all, if I was going to try to take care of the problem of flood control, I wouldn't build a multipurpose dam down near the mouth of the river. I would go up in the headwaters where the damage is and put in numbers of small dry dams. Mm -hmm. And I do terracing and, and put on cover crops and do the many things to hold the water where it falls. Well, then, as a practical matter, uh, the private companies expect to oppose vigorously the government's building any more dams such as were built by the TVA and in the Great Northwest. You, you, you're, go you're, you're generally going to oppose the building of any more hydroelectric dams by the government. Is that correct? I can't speak for the industry, and I wouldn't like to make a blanket statement. But I, like any other taxpayer, I think would oppose money spent unwisely, uneconomically for dams or projects of Do you that think kind. that the dams that have been built thus far, the highly publicized dams that have been built thus far, uh, have not been in the public interest? Most of them, I would say, are not in the public interest. How about uh, this uneconomic business you refer to? Isn't hydroelectric power cheaper than steam-produced power? No. It isn't? Although that is a statement that uh, should be qualified. It depends upon the part of the country, the kind of st streams, the competitive uh, cost of fuel. Mm -hmm. This idea of cheap hydropower originated years ago when we had as uh, other methods of producing power, uh, the inefficient steam plants of those days. Mm -hmm. When it took three to four pounds of coal to make a kilowatt hour, mm -hmm. there's been great progress in the development of steam so that the efficient plants of today, steam producing plants, steam uh, electric plants, produce a kilowatt hour for about nine, about eight tenths of a pound of coal per kilowatt hour, as against three or four pounds years ago. Mm -hmm. Now the cost of building the hydro plants has increased and uh, the better sites have been taken. The public doesn't realize that in the present efficient steam plant, one ounce of coal will make its generators more kilowatt hours than 25,000 gallons of water falling a distance of one foot. Now uh, that's a point, sir. The federal government undertook the hydroelectric plans, the hydroelectric projects, under the role of building flood control projects, not primarily to produce electric power. This was the tail of the dog. This was a byproduct of the flood control dams, was it not? That is correct. And that's the way it's set up in law. That is the way Congress intended. Does the federal government today produce any electric power by steam and coal? Today they are, pr are generating with steam generating plants and have under construction an aggregate in excess of three million kilowatts, which no. is equivalent to about four million horsepower, which could generate from 15 to 20 billion kilowatt hours a year. Mr. Sutton, is it fair to say that our vast uh, atomic energy industry was created with power from the dams of the TVA and from the Northwest? 
Is it fair to say that we probably could not have developed the atomic atomic energy to the point that we've now developed it without that? So. What was the atomic bomb developed with uh, hydroelectric power from TVA and from the Northwest, or was it developed with power from private industry? Well, at the uh, one in the TV, uh, TVA area, the Oak Ridge plant, they put in a large generating plant of their own. They used construction power from TVA, and TVA at times gave them power, but they had their own power plant. Now, you are developing the, the big new bomb down in, in the Carolinas. Uh, is the power there to be supplied by private industry or by the government-generated power? There's a lot of secrecy about the workings of the atomic energy plant. But from things I have seen in the paper, it appears that a minor part of the power, what they call certain vital power, is going to be furnished by a plant that the atomic energy uh, crowd are putting in themselves. The great amount of power is to be purchased from the local public utility company. There. Now, as a final question, sir, I'm sure that our audience uh, would, would like a prediction from you as to just what's going to happen in the immediate future. Are, are, are the private power companies going to win the battle, or do you think that the, that the government people will use power as a sort of subterfuge to promote socialism? I'm sure they are going to endeavor to use power as a subterfuge to extend and socialize a business. The different moves that are made with respect to power are hard to understand by a person who's not familiar with the industry, but to one who is familiar. It, if every move is a well thought out plan to socialize or nationalize a power industry, and well, when they take over the power industry, they have a powerful weapon to control the people in most all industries. Well, thank you, Mr. Sutton, for these very forthright views. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Mr. William Bradford Huey and Mr. Donald I. Rogers. Our distinguished guest was Mr. Lewis F. Sutton, president of the Carolina Power and Light Company. Are you interested in a watch of better than average accuracy? Then let your choice be Longines, the world's most honored watch. For in every field of timing where accuracy is a challenge, Longines watches enjoy a position of preference in sports, in aviation, in science. For excellence, elegance, and accuracy, Longines watches have been honored by 10 World's Fair Grand Prizes, 28 gold medals, and highest awards from the leading government observatories. Truly, the world's most honored watch. These are the reasons why the first choice of discriminating men and women throughout the world is Longines. For in Longines watches, they find those precious qualities of finer design, greater accuracy, and longer life. And yet do you know that you can buy and own or buy and proudly give a Longines watch for as little as $71.50? Longines, the world's most honored watch. Premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company. Since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. We invite you to join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening at this same time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. This is Frank Knight reminding you that Longines and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem. Agency for Longines, Whitnor watches. This is the CBS Television Network.